In last week's Toy Tuesday, I made the very bold statement that this is the greatest TV and film related toy of all times, and it absolutely is. I also upset someone at Corgi about my review of this one, their new version of that one, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay YouTubers, welcome to this week's Toy Tuesday. In this video, I'm going to prove to you that the Aston Martin DB5 by Corgi is the greatest TV and film related toy in the world. A bold claim, I know, but in this video, I'm gonna reveal some amazing facts that you may or may not have known about this toy that prove that this tiny but epic piece of miniature engineering is worthy of the title, the greatest TV and film related toy of all time. Oh, and if you disagree with me about the DB5, please add your suggestions in the comment section below, but I need to let you know now, but I need to let you know now for transparency, this is not a democracy, so I'm always gonna win. Now don't get me wrong, many legendary toys that have fetched millions of dollars forward slash pounds have been created from movie franchises, but I would argue that none of these are a single toy that have been in production as long, have sold as many units, are as instantly recognizable, are as epically cool, and still an object of beauty to this day, and a design classic too. With the possible exception of some low budget sci-fi movies and a cartoon mouse corporation. But as I said before, this is not a democracy. So here are my reasons why I think this is the greatest TV and film related toy of all time. Now, although this wasn't Corgi's first TV and film related product, it was actually the Saints uh, Volvo, the very pretty car that I have done in a previous Toy Tuesday, if you wanna go and check that out. Now, getting this car into production in time was no mean feat. The original car was developed in under nine months and created an absolute production panic at Corgi. Corgi used three teams of engineers working independently to create the three effects on the car, the overriders, the ejector seat, and the bullet screen at the back. Working in miniature, they've created an absolute classic toy. It's fantastic. The mechanisms to make all these moving parts on this toy consist of 24 individual complex pieces. Just to put it in perspective how popular this toy was at the time, 750,000 were sold between October and Christmas of 1965. They literally couldn't manufacture them fast enough. Two of my all-time favourite facts about this car, one of them is that this is not a DB5 at all, it's an Aston Martin DB4. I think it was number 218 and it had an opening bonnet and Corgi had to completely sabotage that toy in its production to get this made in time. And also, it says Goldfinger on the box, but it was actually produced in 65. They rushed it out for the film Thunderball, having missed an opportunity the previous year to actually put this out for the film Goldfinger. I think they really missed a trick there but in the end, boy, did they ever catch up. Another big risk that Corgi took with this car was painting it gold, because as you probably remember, unless you're not a Bond fan, but then why would you be watching this video anyway, you would know that the car in the film was silver and the toy is gold. Now, to me, that's a big risk, but at the time, the silver paint that they had when they put it on looked awful. It looked like the car was still in bare metal. So they took a punt, painted it gold, and a legend was born. Corgi produced and sold so many of this toy that they had to retool it three times between 1965 and 1978. And they actually improved it each time with putting revolving number plates and tire slashes in. They actually perfected the silver paint so that the car looked right and actually made it look like a DB5 instead of a DB4. And it ended up in 136 scale, which I think is the one that I played with the most as a kid. They also perfected the silver paint by this time and made it look more like a DB5. But this original, the 261, is still my absolute favorite. I think it's a fabulous looking toy. First launched in 1965, this toy has been in production almost consecutively for 56 years, which on its own I think is an amazing feat. Between 1965 and 1982, Corgi sold a breathtaking 5,970,000 no, 5, DB5s. I think that's a phenomenal number. And bear in mind there was a factory fire in 1969, so they lost the sales figures for that year. So it's in excess of 6 million of these they sold, which is an incredible feat. And I would like to know how many they've sold since. But the fact that it's still in production, the fact that it's remained in the catalogue for so many years, the fact that it stood the test of time is why I am arguing that this is the greatest TV and film related toy of all time. It absolutely, undoubtedly is. I'd just like to interrupt this video to give a quick apology to the nice people at Corgi um, because of what I said about their toy last week. So they will be available to buy at Brooks Collectibles and Corgi, you have made a wonderful product and I do think it's very good. It's not as good as the original, but it is an epic toy. And if I got one as a present, 
I would be absolutely chuffed to bits. He says shamelessly, even though he is selling them. If you would like to buy one, even though I won't have any stock in time for Christmas, I will be able to mail order them out to you. And if you do, just contact me through the comment section below or through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and I'll let you know if we have any available. So to conclude why this is the greatest TV and film related toy of all times, it's an absolute epic feat of miniature engineering. It's an awesome toy. It's ingrained in the memories of children. It was from a great film. And you have to admit, even after 56 years in production, you still want one, don't you? It's absolutely fantastic. And that is something no other toy has ever achieved. That is why this is the greatest TV and film related toy of all time. It just is. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do a Toy Tuesday in between Christmas and New Year. So if I don't, this is me now saying Merry Christmas to everyone and Happy New Year. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the stories about the toys you had as a kid. Um, I've had a great year. I know I've not been able to do as many videos as I wanted to. And I'm working on something a little bit different and a little bit bigger for next year, a longer video, which um, I promised earlier this year. It involves my Sinclair C5, which I broke, which has taken a long time to repair, but it's done now. So I'm going to be doing my past versus the future video based on electric transport, old and new. But for now, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.